Welcome back to Veteran Art Studio. I'm MB Delocchio, and today we're going to be covering nonfiction writing, how to get started outlining your manuscript, and additional resources for emerging writers. Maybe you're just interested in learning the initial steps of how to write a nonfiction book. That's cool too. We'll start with an introduction to nonfiction writing and outlines, then go into the process of actually getting started on your main manuscript outline. And don't worry if it takes an entire year or more for your book to be written. We can work on it together one step at a time. Ready? Let's begin with an introduction to nonfiction writing. What is nonfiction writing exactly? Nonfiction writing is exactly what it sounds like, any form of writing where fiction is excluded in some way. This may mean the presence of facts such as biographies and historical texts, or simply writing about a topic of interest such as self-help books and instruction manuals. The most important thing to know about nonfiction is that it requires research before you even begin to write about your book, not just after your draft is finished. So why is nonfiction writing important? We've already seen its role in the preservation of history, but thanks to modern technology, there are different ways that nonfiction books can be distributed across the world at little cost to the author. With all of this potential for creativity and revenue generation comes great responsibility. If your nonfiction book is published, it has the potential to help others in ways you may never imagine. Don't forget that your words are powerful. What does nonfiction writing involve? A nonfiction book should take the form of an introduction, multiple chapters, which are roughly the same length, and a conclusion. Each chapter should be divided into subsections that tackle different parts of your subject matter. This way it's easier for readers to follow along with you. And finally, remember that there needs to be some kind of research involved at every step along the way. Even if you're writing about something you've experienced firsthand, it still helps to do some fact checking. Writing nonfiction books. Now that we've established what nonfiction writing is and why it's important, let's go over how to write a nonfiction book step by step. First up, manuscript outlines. Book proposal brainstorming for nonfiction books. Just like fiction manuscripts, every nonfiction book should have an outline before you begin writing your first draft. Since this is probably not something that you're used to doing unless you're already a seasoned writer, I'm going to explain how to not only plan out each chapter of your book one by one, but to start with a book content overview. Book proposal writing or book content overview is helpful as a first step before diving into your manuscript because it helps work out your main idea as well as any doubts or fears about taking the plunge into writing your book. Believe me, everyone has had this issue to an extent. This will be helpful when it comes to pitch your work to literary agents and or publishers, but it also helps organize your thoughts as well as address any fears or concerns that you may have before diving into the meat and potatoes of your manuscript. Book content overview. First off, congratulations on taking the first step toward writing your nonfiction book. Let's start with the book content overview. This one sentence describes your entire manuscript in broad strokes. For example, let's say you want to write about the history of video games. Your content overview might say something like, a nonfiction writing course that covers the history and development of video games from their inception to modern day console releases, as well as basic information on how to turn an idea for a game into a reality. Now we'll break down the sentence into several parts. First up is genre. This helps publishers quickly determine if their readers will be interested in your work or not. Next is the history. This tells readers what your book is about. Then you highlight the topic that you're writing about. Once you've narrowed down your focal point, you can then answer the following questions and fill out a section of the introduction, the outline, and conclusion. Try at least three subpoints for each chapter. First, you want to ask yourself, what? What is the concept, topic, or idea that you want to relate to your reader or audience? Where? Where does this concept, topic, or idea apply? Why? Why does this matter? Who? Who is this for and who is involved? You want to think about your audience, what kind of readers that you're wanting to appeal to, and also, you know, who are you really doing this for? Are you doing this for yourself? Are you doing this to 
um, help out anybody in particular? It's a really good question and it'll keep your motivation up throughout the writing process as well. When? Is there a concept of time involved? So if you're writing a, let's say a memoir, and you're focusing on, let's say, three years of your life that were extremely difficult and taught you a lot of valuable life lessons, then you want to narrow down your scope there, and that's the way that you can divide up your book accordingly and figure out which parts are going to be the most important to focus on, which points are going to be the most important to focus on based on the timeline itself. And finally, how? Ask yourself, how will this happen? Next, we'll move on to title. You want to write a list of potential book titles based on the concept, topic, or idea that you want to relate to your reader or audience. For example, um, if you have a book title that says, it's not all about me, could be retitled to something like, how to be an effective leader. Subtitle. Next, write a list of book subtitles based on the concept, topic, or idea that you want to relate to your audience. For example, a book entitled, It's Not All About Me, could have the subtitle of How to Become an Effective Leader Through Compassionate Team Building. Does that make sense? Next, we'll talk about book description. After addressing potential titles and subtitles, write a summary of your book based on the concept, topic, or central idea that you want to relate to your target audience. Essentially, it is your first step in writing a call to action to buy this book. What would make you want to buy a book like yours? For example, considering something like this. Empathy has become the foundation of living in today's world. The ability to see through people's eyes is underrated and underutilized in our personal lives, professional settings, and social structures. This initial statement would be an impressive book description that would get the right type of attention from potential readers. It also acts as a call to action for readers who want to explore more about empathy in their own lives and how to increase it within their current interactions with others. Next, we'll move into introduction. The hook. In writing your hook, you might want to consider writing a compelling personal story based on the concept, topic, or idea that you want to relate to your audience. This can be done by writing a shocking fact based on your overall concept. You can then follow this up with an uncommon belief based on the concept, topic, or idea, and then you might want to also consider using an emotional or compelling statistic that is relevant, like a famous line from a book that you've read. Pro tip, personal stories, shocking facts, and options contradictory to popular belief are great ways to hook a reader and captivate someone's attention. This book is for you. In this section, you want to write a paragraph about who this book is for and defining your target audience. Who might want to buy your book and why? This will come in handy later if you end up having to write a book proposal that will incorporate competitive titles and marketing details. Next, write a paragraph about who this book is not for. Think about the people who may not be interested in reading your book. In other words, If you write a book about how to train your dog, is there someone out there who would not be interested in it? This section is also important because it may help you hone in your own writing voice. If you find yourself writing with too many big words or using complicated sentence structures that might put off or confuse your audience, this might be a good place to simplify and or break up sentences into smaller parts with subheadings. By doing this, you're calling out internal desires and removing present pain. Then you can expand upon your strongest points by asking, are you tired of this issue? Do you want more of relief from this issue? Are you ready for, and then insert the answers to your most burning questions. Next, you wanna deal with your skeptics head on. To strengthen your ideas, your arguments and points, what would a skeptical person say about this concept, topic or idea? This is a great idea to go with for objection handling. Call it out here and address the concept, topic, or idea that you want to relate to skeptics. Addressing your skeptics is not just about selling your book when it's done. It also can help address your own fears about your writing. Basically, you want to wrap up each chapter by dealing with any possible objection a reader might have. Do this for all your chapters. You can write out direct questions here that will help you phrase your thoughts to flow better when writing the next part of your book. You want to play devil's advocate to your own work one chapter at a time. You can also answer, this book is still for you even if XYZ. 
you want to reach as wide of an audience as possible. Next, address how this book is different. What are three ways this book is different? Take a look at similar books in the genre you're writing for and talk about what makes your book unique. Address how this book is different from similar books in the genre and why it's better for your audience. Think of three ways that your book is different or better than similar ones out there right now. If you can't think of any major points to make, then go back and readdress those objections as well as do more research on other titles that are available in the same topic, genre, etc. Including these comparisons will increase your credibility as a writer because it shows you've studied up on what's already out there. Emulate the best qualities while still making your work stand apart from others. If a reader wants a specific perspective or style, they may find it here. But if they don't find it here, you can let them know where else to go to get the perspective they want. Next, add some personal philosophy here. What do you believe? How does this belief relate to your book and what you're writing about? This section is somewhat of a prelude with a little more personality than philosophy, and it's designed to connect readers on a deeper level. Authors don't just write books for their readers, they also write because something is burning inside them that makes them want to create something bigger than themselves. For example, an idea or a message. Writing out what drives us as people is just as important to us as it is for those who read what we write. What benefit do you offer readers? How will this information help or change their lives, financially or emotionally? What is something that your reader can learn or understand after reading your book? For example, if the concept of a book is to train your dog once again, what do you teach people that they may not already know? A difficult to train dog can be a source of potentially uncomfortable chaos for someone who doesn't know how to deal with them. And specific steps on how best to work with certain breeds, types of dogs might provide readers peace of mind and perhaps more time for themselves. How to read this book. This is how you can explain your overall structure to your audience as somewhat of a roadmap without giving everything away at once. This helps give your readers a sense of direction, which will put them at ease and allow themselves to be open to what you have to say. You don't have to give away all your secrets right now or up front, but a little guidance will help people engage with your writing that much more. Don't go off on a tangent here. The point is to keep it brief and not bore readers at this stage of the game. They'll read all about that stuff when they get into the book if they're really interested in it. What's in this book? This is where you can start to think about the chapters and the main points, topics, and then talk about two major takeaways from each chapter for your audience. This is where you provide an overview of what people will learn as they read through your book, similar to how an editor might explain the concept behind a piece. Keep this brief and use bullet points to make it easy to read and understand. Toward the end, bring things back around to where you started with your introduction. For example, reinforce why it's still relevant to people or why people should care about this topic. Why this book or topic matters to me. This is where you can do some personal storytelling if appropriate for your work. What got you interested in this topic? How did this book come about? What is something meaningful that happened during its creation. Authors can use this section to help readers connect on a deeper level with their writing because it shows how they are personally invested in what they're talking about. You can also use an anecdote about someone who inspired you. Selling your idea. Imagine someone asking you to sell them on the opportunity of publishing your book. Why should they believe in you? Have confidence and clarity that you are on the right path and communicate that accordingly. Don't be afraid to talk about the strengths of your idea, particularly if someone might find fault with it. This is also where you can briefly discuss what sets your book apart from similar books on the market. What will make people want to read your book over others? Sell them on three main things. The right opportunity, the book itself. The right person, you as the author. Right time is them. Why is this the right time for your book and why are you the person who is meant to tell the story? If not this, then what? If not you, then who? If not now, then when? Don't be afraid to ask yourself these questions first because if you get into the publishing process, you're going to have to answer them to someone else. It's best if you take this time now to ask yourself these questions. 
nonfiction outline. Now let's jump into creating your manuscript outline. In using this template for rapid fire brainstorming, you can come back, organize and insert in a logical order based on the flow of the book, based on your ideas, whether it's a memoir or a specific period of your life, or let's say a book based on mental health. In the following nonfiction outline, you can write your manuscript based on the concept, topic, or idea that you want to relate to your audience. So let's start with chapter one. Chapter one, the problem you are solving. Chapter one should really be about a problem that you're addressing or solving for the sake of keeping focus though. Let's say you want to write a book about overcoming or managing ongoing symptoms of anxiety. Ask yourself, why is it important to discuss this issue? Why is it imperative to solve this problem? Write a problem that you are attempting to solve based on the central idea that you want to relate to your readers. Write an introductory paragraph about the biggest problem relating to the concept or central idea. Then you want to write a chapter outline based on the main or central idea using three main bullet points. Then you can write a chapter conclusion paragraph with action steps based on the central idea. Chapter two, history of the problem. The first step in chapter two is to ask yourself, where did this all begin? all the way through, where are we now? In this chapter, you're discussing the history of the problem that you're trying to solve based on your central idea and the message that you want to convey to your readers. Write an introductory paragraph about the problem, the history of this problem, and how it relates to your overall message for the book and what you want to communicate to your target audience and what they should know. You then want to ask yourself, in terms of the history of the problem, why readers need to know about this issue. You can then write an outline that is chapter specific based on the central idea using three main bullet points. And of course you can give or take the amount of points that you wanna make, but starting with three is a good way to just get going. As soon as you decide your main points, you write your chapter conclusion paragraph with action steps based on the points discussed in this chapter. Chapter three, your method for creating this change. For chapter three, you wanna ask yourself, why is this method different? The third chapter should dive deeper into how much worse things can potentially get. You wanna include specific examples in your nonfiction book by giving statistics, pictures, or stories that are relatable to the topic. Ask yourself, what are the, some of the worst case scenarios based on the topic or central idea? Next, write an introductory paragraph about what could happen relating to your central idea and what you want to communicate to your target audience. Next, write a short chapter specific outline based on the central idea. Then you want to write a chapter conclusion paragraph with action steps based on the concept that you just discussed. In the following chapters, and really you don't have to stick to just 10 or this specific outline, are going to be ways that you can present a step-by-step -step approach for implementing change or a solution to the main problem being discussed. So for every chapter between until your final chapter, uh, we'll use 10 here as an example, you can present a variety of ways to overcome certain obstacles and move through an issue or a problem. Chapters four through nine, additional steps for creating change. You wanna ask yourself, what do we need to do first to create change or resolve this issue? What next? And after that, you get the point. All of those points are potential chapters. Bonus tip, rinse and repeat for each chapter. Modify the points based on the concept, topic, or idea based on the overview. So essentially, you wanna write a story based on the concept, topic, or central idea that you wanna to relate to your readers, introduce the topic of the chapter, write the chapter outline based on your bullet points for the chapter, and then write a chapter conclusion paragraph with action steps based on your central idea. Chapter 10, what the future holds. What's coming in the future based on your overall central idea? Write a story based on the concept, topic, or central idea and how you wanna relate that to your audience. Introduce the topic of what's next. What does the future hold? Write a list of your bullet points based on the topic for this chapter. Then write your chapter conclusion paragraph with action steps based on the main idea. Conclusion. In your conclusion, think about what questions you've specifically answered in your book. 
you need to make sure your reader is satisfied. Don't introduce any new ideas or topics, but if there's anything that needs more explanation, feel free to do so. You can also recommend other books and resources based on the topic if you want. If you've made it this far through your manuscript, congratulations. It may seem like a lot of work at first, but trust me, writing will become easier with time and practice. And don't feel obligated to implement everything we've discussed here. Just try out these steps and see what happens. That's all any writer can ask for, right? Your conclusion should also summarize the concepts covered in each chapter based on the outline. You still want to use your own words, but you can rephrase certain points. Finally, be sure to thank the reader and provide a call to action of sorts for the next steps. In the end, you can provide additional information, tools needed for the journey, and list additional research and resources to assist the reader. Once you've completed your nonfiction manuscript, you may ask yourself, where do I go from here? First of all, you don't have to rush it. Unless you've written a nonfiction piece or even historical fiction about something that actually happened in the past, there's no deadline on when your book needs to be finished. That being said, if you are ready to publish now, make sure that you do your research on what publishers and agents are currently accepting. And be specific about who you're targeting depending on what category they're looking for. You may want to check out other writer resources listed in the description box below, and don't forget to check your local library and bookstores. You may also be surprised at the number of nonfiction writing competitions out there, as well as what you can find. This can certainly help jumpstart your motivation to write. If you found this guide helpful, be sure to like, share, and subscribe for more writing tips and free workshops. Thanks for stopping by and I wish you happy writing and in the meantime, take care and I'll see you next time here in the studio.